What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, aka Dave Control, and welcome to my spoiler-filled Elden Ring lore series. For those of you who don't know me, I've been making From Software lore videos on my personal channel for 8 years now. Today, let's discuss the first major boss of Elden Ring, a demigod and lord who despite his status, was laughed at behind his back, but would yearn for approval. Today, we'll discuss Godric the Grafted and Stormvale Castle. To talk about Godric, we first need to start with Godfrey the First Elden Lord. While I do want to eventually do a full lore video focusing on him, for now, just a brief breakdown is what we need. Godfrey fought for Merica's various wars and causes to help spread the will of the Erdtree. One of the first great wars Merica and the Erdtree took on was against the Flame Giants. In ancient times, the Giants were mortal enemies of the Erdtree. Here, it was Godfrey who defeated them and helped them emerge as victors for the Erdtree. Hark! Brave warriors, hark, my Lord Godfrey, we commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erdtree. Godfrey was previously known as Horalu and was a great warrior who thirsted for battle, although it's unclear to me if it was before or after fighting the war with the giants, he became Godfrey. While this is speculation, it could be the very reason Merica utilized him and gave him lordship in order to have a champion who could win her battles. But when he decided to become Elden Lord, he needed a way to suppress his appetite for war, and that would come in the form of the beast Sirash. Godfrey was a ferocious warrior. When he vowed to become a lord, he took the beast region Sirash upon his back to suppress the ceaseless lust for battle that raged within. As such, the lion would come to represent Godfrey, the golden lineage, and victories in war. From the golden beast crest shield, the beast depicted is Sirash, aged counselor who guides the golden lineage. Around this time when Godfrey had become Elden Lord, he and Merica had children together. The children of Merica and Godfrey were known as the Golden Lineage, and due to their relation with Merica, were all demigods. Godric's Great Rune tells us that the first demigods were the Elden Lord Godfrey and his offspring, the Golden Lineage, which is how we know that the Golden Lineage is specifically people related to both Merica and Godfrey. Meanwhile, their demigod status is specifically due to their blood relationship with Merica. The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. So, who do we know as part of the Golden Lineage and therefore descendants of Godfrey and Marika? Well, there's Godwin, who's often referred to as Godwin the Golden, with the golden title indicating he's a part of the Golden Lineage. Godwin was the first of the demigods to die during the Night of the Black Knives, but before that, he was best known for helping win another major war with the Erdtree against the Ancient Dragons. A great ancient dragon, Grand Sax once rained calamity upon the royal capital, the only time in historical record that Landell's walls have fallen. This marked the dawn of the war against dragons. Godwin the Golden was a key part of the capital's victory. The routing of the Ancient Dragons, Godwin the Golden fought to the last, earning the friendship of Dread Fort of Sax. Long ago, Godwin the Golden defeated the ancient dragon Fortisax and befriended his fallen foe, an event that gave rise to the ancient dragon cult in the capital. So, thanks to Godwin the Golden, dragons would become accepted in the capital. The worship of the ancient dragons does not conflict with belief in the Erdtree. After all, this seal and lightning itself are both imbued with gold. In fact, dragons became rather mythicized. Characters would go out of their way to attack dragons, eat their dragon hearts, and perform dragon communion in order to try and become a dragon. The ancient dragons who ruled before the prehistoric era of the Erdtree would protect their lord as a wall of living rock, and so it is that the shape of the dragon has become symbolic of all manner of protections. All of this is to say, thanks to Godwin the Golden, dragons became rather accepted, which I'm bringing up as it will eventually come up with Godric. So, we know that Godfrey and Merica had Godwin in the Golden Lineage, who was both successful and revered. But there were two more who would be the exact opposite, Mog and Morgat. Morgat's Great Rune tells us that the Omen King was born of the Golden Lineage, and that he was indeed the Lord of Landell. Meanwhile, according to Mog's Great Rune, Mog and Morgat are twin brothers, and their Great Runes are naturally similar. 
Mog and Morgoth were born Omen, who were considered graceless and viewed as impure. But that is another giant can of worms that I'll get to in a future video. Next up is Godfroy the Grafted, which I don't know if that's the pronunciation, by the way. We really don't know much at all about Godfrey, other than that according to ancient dragon knight Kristoff's ashes, during another war considered the first defense of Langdell, the ancient dragon knight Kristoff captured Godfrey, and he's now imprisoned in a golden lineage ever jail. It does raise the question of when he did his grafting, and who else outside of Godfrey and Godric performed the act. Finally, we have Godric. Godric wasn't necessarily Godfrey and Merica's son, in fact, he probably wasn't. The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. Godric the Grafted was but a distant relation, the runt of the litter. His divine blood sorely diluted. Because the demigods are all direct offspring of Queen Marika, that would simply mean that they're blood relation and not related through marriage. However, as Enya notes, Godric's divine blood is sorely diluted, which would indicate that he could be a grandchild or great-great-grandchild, or so on. It could be that his father was Godfroy, whose father was Godwin, whose father was Godfrey. We simply don't know. To my best guess, and this is speculation, Godwin was likely the eldest son of Godfrey and first in line to the throne, hence why he was targeted by Ronnie during the Night of the Black Knives. Godfrey was likely Godwin's son, as the name would be a way to honor his father. Meanwhile, Godric could be Godfrey's child, due to the resemblance and how diluted his blood is supposed to be, or a less powerful twin brother of Godfrey, as they look so similar. This is purely my own speculation though, so take it as that. As twins are such a major theme in the game, with Moog slash Morgat, Darien slash Devon, and Melania slash Mikola, it wouldn't surprise me if Godric and Godfrey were, in fact, twins. But either way, he was of royal blood and is indeed of the Golden Lineage. As such, Godric grew up in Langdell, the royal capital. Godric harbored a huge amount of pride from his Golden Lineage. I command thee now! I am the lord of all that is golden. While he was the runt of the litter, he was still a lord and demigod, so he did have soldiers under his command. While his foot soldiers wore standard gear, his soldiers wore a tree and beast surcoat, which depicts the distant Erd tree and the beast regent, an emblem of the golden lineage. Both are symbols of glory now past. The beast being a reference to Godfrey's Sirash. Meanwhile, his knights wore knight armor, which has its left breast emblazoned with a two-headed war axe, an emblem of the golden lineage. This two-headed war axe would be either the Axe of Godric, which was a great axe wielded by Godric the Grafted, the golden battle axe is emblazoned with the figure of a beast representing the strength of Godfrey, first Elden Lord and Patriarch of the Golden Lineage, or the Axe of Godfrey, which was originally a two-headed war axe, but it was broken in a battle fought as leader of the Tarnish during the Long March. When we find Godric later on in Stormvale, many things around him reference the Erd Tree. The commoners who he rules over, like Gestock, wear commoners' garb that, notably, has a board hung from the neck depicting a sprawling tree, its roots and branches forming two holes. This is a self-imposed shackle, a voluntary display of allegiance to the Erd Tree that increases faith. Meanwhile, the Stormvale Courtyard is adorned with statues that have more Erd Tree symbolism on all of them. The statues found here somewhat resemble the Landale Knights in the giant Erd Tree crest at the top. To me, this looks like the same symbol, and according to the Landale Knight Helm, the golden canopy represents the honor of standing among the tree's defenders. So, all of that said, regardless of what would happen to Godric, he always maintained his own sense of loyalty to the Erd Tree, and likely more so the sense of power and pride it afforded him, as he was pretty looked down upon. So, that said, this is going to be a bit of speculation territory, but I think that Godric likely had a bit of an inferiority complex. After all, Enya herself refers to him as the runt of the litter. I want to look at a line from Gatekeeper Gestock, who served under Godric. What a pathetic excuse for a lord you were. <laughs> Craven to the bone. Pushing me about like that. Pushing around people weaker than you could be associated with someone who has an inferiority complex and wants to feel strong. And after all that grafting, where did that get you? Look down on me, would ya? Godric, you 
filthy slug. In fact, grafting overall is looked down upon in the world of Elden Ring, which makes sense. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. In fact, according to Godric's very own remembrance of the grafted, a feeble man sought power through the grotesque act of grafting, and from the marred leather shield, leather shield of Stormvale soldiers. Much like the castle, it is marred by mottling and thorns. Some say it is the curse of grafting which causes such affliction, while others talk of its roots being something altogether more sinister hidden deep within the castle. The point in this case is that grafting is considered to be a disgusting and grotesque act, which would be similar to why Omen, Misbegotten, and Demi-Humans are considered impure, because they aren't one race or one thing. From the Crucible Knot Talisman, a talisman fashioned from a bony knot that embodies the aspect of various creatures, said to have grown on the human body long ago. A vestige of the Crucible of Primordial Life, born partially of devolution, it was considered a signifier of the divine in ancient times, but is now increasingly disdained as an impurity as civilization has advanced. A similar description comes from the Crucible Feather Talisman and Crucible Scale Talisman. The more pure you are, the better. That's why some view Mikola's unalloyed gold as being the best. Unalloyed simply means pure and untainted, so it's pure gold, thus in this world is viewed as being better. Mikola is a little more complex in that this likely has to do with being free of meddling from the outer gods, and he helped those who were downtrodden, but the general theme we see related to Omen, etc. is that pure things are good. But all of the grafting Godric would do was to try and get a feeling of power so he could measure up to his ancestors who he felt like he wasn't good enough for. Look at this line from Godric when he grafts himself with a dragon. Meanwhile, after defeating the Tarnished in Phase 2 of his boss fight, he says, So, now that we have a feel for his character, let's talk about the Shattering. Once the Elden Ring was shattered, a war for control over the Elden Ring and Laindel, the royal capital, ensued. While Godric managed to nab himself a great rune, the anchor ring in the center of the Elden Ring, he ended up fleeing the capital for Stormvale. He took a mimic veil with him so he could disguise himself as one of the women fleeing and leave with them. When Godric was hounded from Laindel, the royal capital, this was one of a multitude of treasures he took with him, also known as Merica's Mischief. First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. I think he was likely hounded from the capital by Morgoth, who used the opportunity to seize power in the capital to defend the Erd Tree and Golden Order, and defended against those who he viewed as traitors. Ah, Godric the Golden, willful traitors, all. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers, emboldened by the flame of ambition. Looking back at the intro cutscene to Elden Ring, we actually see Morgoth stabbing Radan, likely in a battle for control over Laindel, that Morgoth would win. It was probably around this time that Godfrey was captured by the ancient dragon knight Kristoff, who I would guess was working in league with Morgoth, and therefore gained the honor of Erdtree burial through Morgoth. So, Godric fled to Stormvale using the Mimic Veil, Stormvale which he probably viewed himself as having a claim over and had no residing lord. Before being cast away, Godfrey went on a march south of Laindel, conquering land in the name of the Golden Order and teachings of America. We can track this progress by looking at the Church's America. The first Church America is in the mountaintops of the Giants. As her teachings spread, we see them get further and further away, all the way south to the Weeping Peninsula where we find the fourth Church America. Godfrey defeated and conquered Castle Morn, taking control of it. The Siege of Castle Morn, a lone hero fights for his vengeance, only to fall at the hand of Lord Godfrey. Godfrey went all the way into Caleb before his campaign ended. Lord Godfrey, at last at the end of his campaign, his golden armies unvanquished and unbowed, yet finds grace lost, tattered, and faded. And of course, on the way south would be Stormvale Castle, which was ruled by the Stormhawk King. According to the Elden Lord armor set, the Age of the Urtree began amongst conflict. When Godfrey was Lord of the Battlefield, he led the war against the Giants, faced the Stormlord alone. 
According to the Warhawk Ashes, with its lord vanquished and its wings wounded, the hawk perished as it solemnly gazed at its former home. The storm is a Warhawk's cradle, and from Stormhawk Dean, spirit of a fierce hawk that faithfully rendered lifelong service to the old king of Stormvale long ago when the true storm raged. We also find the Stormhawk King, who is a hawk revered by all others as sovereign back in the days when Stormvale's winds still raged like no other. This ancient monarch is proud, however, refusing to answer anyone's summons. So it's very possible that the Stormlord who Godfrey defeated was the Stormhawk King. That said, the Storm of Elden Ring can also refer to Faro Missoula, with the dragons of Faro Missoula being a major enemy of the Earth Tree, so that item description could be referring to that. The part that I find particularly interesting is that the Stormhawk King answers to Nefeli Lu. In this ash, I can smell the ancient storm. It reminds me of my first hawk. In fact, giving her the Stormhawk King ashes leads to her becoming the master of Stormvale. This land is much like the one from which I hail. I will call upon the storm to drive away the foulness that has settled on the winds. Nefeli Lu, by her name, is Hara Lu's direct descendant, likely born after he was banished from the lands between and discarded his mantle as Godfrey. So it's likely that Godfrey defeated the Stormhawk King and gained its allegiance through power and gained ownership over Stormvale Castle. Then he eventually left the lands between, leaving Stormvale Castle leaderless. According to the banished knight Angval Ashes, Angval was one of the two knights dubbed the Wings of the Storm. Despite his banishment, he rejected the invitation of the grace-given lord, instead keeping watch over a masterless castle for many years, gaining renown as a hero of the fringes. Which would further indicate that perhaps Haralu slash Godfrey was the former master of Stormvale, and his leaving left it masterless. It's worth noting that the other Wing of the Storm that banished Knight Oleg instead took the sight of Morgoth. After his banishment, he attracted the notice of the grace-given lord, and later, having slayed a hundred traitors as the lord's hand, Oleg earned the hero's honor of Erdtree burial. We know thanks to Sir Gideon Offnir that the grace-given lord refers to Morgoth. Morgoth, the grace-given, veiled monarch and lord of Lame Dell. While I'm not certain if Haralu or Godfrey ever truly ruled over Stormvale, either way, I think this castle was essentially owned by the Golden Lineage, even if it didn't have a residing master. Which is all to say, it would make sense that this would be where Godric would head to after running away from Lane Dell. He'd already have subjects loyal to him at Stormvale, and there was no other master leading the castle. Godric set up his subjects as Stormvale, took the castle as his own, and even had a beast there resembling Sirash. The soldiers who served Godric the Grafted are what remains of the army that fled the royal capital of the Erd Tree. I don't know the exact timeline of this, but it's possible that this is the point Godric began grafting himself, we see a main room in Stormvale set up for grafting, all in view of a picture of Godfrey. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame, the big girl's blouse? After Godric fled to Stormvale, Melania decided to take on Radon and march south all the way from the Halo Tree, past Liurnia, and towards Radon. Here she entered a conflict with Godric who, surprisingly, decided to take her on. As I mentioned, it's possible he'd started grafting himself at this point and thought he was far more powerful than he actually was. That said, I don't know the exact point he started grafting. Godric the Golden, humiliated, having tasted defeat by the Blade of Mikola, now on his knees, begging for mercy. While Godric may have humiliated himself, he survived. And thanks to him failing to stop Melania in spectacular fashion, Melania was able to continue her march to Radon, where she and Radon would end up essentially destroying each other in a stalemate battle. Melania was dragged all the way back to the Halig Tree to recover, while Radon was left insane with Scarlet Rot eating him away. So, after the battle, Godric used the opportunity to expand his influence. He set up Edgar in Castle Morn, which Godfrey had previously won in battle. I'm Edgar, warden of this castle, as ordained by Lord Godric himself. But you can see how things have turned out. The menials have all rebelled. They gave me good service, or so I thought. But it seems it was all an act. Meanwhile, it seems he had his knights kick someone who wasn't as loyal, Kenneth Height, out of his fort. Young Tarnished, I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it, a fool and plumb mad to boot, simply obsessed with blood. Of course, a knight commander of Stormvale would be someone acting in the service of Godric. 
Godric set up his new home base here in Limgrave, setting up various defensive positions. He hires, or forces, a number of exiled soldiers to man his castle, having them defend the front gate with ballistas. Walk through the gate and you'll witness this in action. He claims the storm gate just outside of Stormvale Castle as his own and drapes his banners along it. Additionally, he maintains the gatefront ruins, sending his soldiers there to defend and watch for any incoming enemies. On the way from the stranded graveyard and first steps towards the gatefront ruins and Stormvale Castle, various people have been crucified in the exact same manner as Merica's holy image. While there isn't any direct proof that this was by Godric's hand, I think it's pretty likely this was Godric sending a message. At some point around here, Godric began obsessively grafting himself trying to become stronger. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. But he didn't only seem to graft himself. In Stormvale Castle, in the grafting grounds, and near piles of bodies Godric took for grafting, we find a grafted scion. Everyone's... been grafted? Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me, they fought... for me. <laughs> Only to have their arms taken. Their legs taken, even their heads... taken. Taken and stuck. To the spider. Did you know, if you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid? It's quite the lark when you think about it. While Godfrey is also grafted, I think it's likely the grafted scions are a result of Godric. So where do we find grafted scions? We find two of them in the fringe folk hero's grave, guarding an Erdtree's favor. We find one disguised as a giant crayfish in Liurnia. We find one on Mount Gelmir near the 9th Mount Gelmir campsite, and we find one at the very beginning of the game at the Chapel of Anticipation. This grafted scion uses and drops a Golden Beast Crest Shield and an ornamental straight sword. The Golden Beast Crest Shield is a shield of dull gold with a beast engraved at its crest. The beast depicted as Sarash, aged counselor who guides the Golden Lineage. Meanwhile, the ornamental straight sword is a slender straight sword patterned after an antique ornament. After falling from grace, the dregs of the Golden Lineage sought power and purpose in the past. Both of these items are directly related to Godric, again making me think it's Godric creating these grafted scions at Stormvale Castle and sending them out to do his bidding. Most importantly here is the one at the Church of Anticipation. Godric and the other demigods are well aware of the Tarnish being brought back to kill them and become Elden Lord. So it seems Godric created this grafted scion, and he put it here at the Chapel of Anticipation, specifically to stop Tarnish from ever even being able to attempt to fight him, and before they and their maiden could use runes for power to grow in strength. Challenge Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale, to acquire a great rune. Decrepit he may be, but a demigod he remains. And of course, an inheritor of a great rune. Worse yet, I hear old Godric's acquired a ferocious new toy to graft. <laughs> so, prepare for the worst. As the ornamental stray sword tells us, after falling from grace, the dregs of the golden lineage sought power and purpose in the past. Recall that dragons are actually looked at pretty fondly in present times within the Elden Ring, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Godric, also thinking of dragons in a positive way, decides to also graft a dragon onto himself. Mighty dragon. Thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. As far as being a true-born heir, this is likely due to the fact that dragons were Elden Lord before Godfrey ever was. Godfrey was only the first Elden Lord of the Erdtree. The dragon lord whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time is said to have been Elden Lord in the age before the Erdtree. Once his god was fled, the lord continued to await its return. So perhaps Godric knows this history as he is a demigod. Ah! Ah! 
truest of dragons. <sighs> Lend me thy strength. <sighs> In the end, all Godric wanted was to return to his home in Elaindel. I am the lord of all that is golden. And one day, we'll return together to our home, bathed in rays of gold. <sighs> According to the Gilded Great Shield, it's a shield carried by knights loyal to Godric. The red tinge in the gold coat mirrors the primordial matter that became the Erd Tree, the color of homeward yearning. That wraps up this lore video on Godric the Grafted and Stormvale Castle. I honestly didn't expect it to be this long when I first started writing it, but it just goes to show how absolutely dense and packed the lore of Elden Ring is. One major thing I didn't touch on was Godwin's image being in Stormvale Castle. I want to save that for a dedicated video on Godwin. Of course, as always, if there's anything I presented you disagree with or you have other theories, I'd love to hear them. I always encourage people to seek out other lore videos because there's things I might have missed and other theories that might seem more viable. It's all a discussion, and this is that fun phase where we're all figuring it out together. If you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate it if you let me know and give a like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I intend to make many more videos, and I hope to make this a weekly lore series. If there are any comments that help give me insight I wasn't able to find, I'll always give credit to you. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.